Hello, and welcome back to Dev with Sev. I'm your host, Sev the Dev, and today we are going to set up our character's animations so we can bring our code to life. Let's get started. We are going to be declaring our animator in our character script. So let's go ahead and make a private animator. And we'll name it animator. And now we also want a public get setter. So let's go ahead and make one here. And we want this set to be protected as well. Now we're going to fix something that we didn't do in the last video. If we go into our player script, we're going to be extrapolating the rigidbody 2 d into our character script. So let's go ahead and remove this. And we'll boldly remove the start function. Now we already have the reference to rigidbody 2 d here, but let's go ahead and set them now. So if we do if get component rigidbody 2 d Let's copy that. Now let's set our rigid body 2D here to that get component. And likewise, for the animator, we're going to get component animator. And we're going to set our animator to the get component. We're also going to switch the start function to awake because we want our variables to be initialized when our objects are initialized. Now back into the player script, since we removed rigidbody2d here, we need to adjust all these variables to capital RB2D. Let's copy that and replace it wherever we see the red squiggly lines. OK. Now if we go back into the editor and let it load, let's click play and make sure everything's still working. OK. Looks like everything's still working. Let's go back into Visual Studio. And if we go into our player, let's scroll down till we have our handle methods. And let's make a new one called private void handle animations. And we'll call that an update. So let's go back into the editor now and go to our bandit pack and find the animation folder. Here we can see the animation controller, and these are the parameters we need to set from the animator. So if we go to our character prefab, let's go ahead and add an animator component. And I'm actually going to move that over to the top, right above sprite renderer. And for the animator, we need to drag in that animation controller. And we can actually do the same thing for enemy. But notice for enemy, we're using the heavy bandit. So we're going to add an animator, move that up. And drag in the heavy guard animation controller. Back in our player script, let's double check that our animator is working correctly. So down in handle animations, we can say if attempt jump and check grounded, we're going to animator, set trigger, and we're going to say jump. We know it's jump because if we go back into our editor, 
and open up our Bandit animation controller. We can see that jump is a parameter here. So if we scroll over here, we can see that light guard jump is playing an animation clip, and it's using that as a parameter. So if we go back into our scene, press play. Now when we jump, we should see the animations playing. Now we don't have the animation set up for other things, so it's just constantly playing the jump, so we'll go ahead and fix that now. And I would like to mention before we move on that we are using some pre-built animation controllers. If you would like me to explain how to make your own animation controllers, let me know down below and I'll make a video just for that. Now we're going to go back to handle animations and we're going to check if we're grounded. So animator dot set bool and it's the grounded field and we're going to check it with check grounded. We want to add one more check to our if statement around jump. This is because we don't want the jump animation to play if we're just skipping over geometry. So we're going to check if our rb2d.velocity.y is greater than 1f. We're also going to make a private boolean is melee attacking. This is a flag to tell when we're actually in the state of attacking, and we're going to use that to override some animations. In our jump, we'll say if not is melee attacking, and then we'll move our animator jump into that statement. The reason we do this is because we want our melee attack to override our jump animation if we're airborne. Now for our melee attack, let's say if attempt melee attack, and then another if not is melee attacking, we're going to say animator dot set trigger. and we're going to use the attack field. Now we can go into the editor and press play, and we can see our animations playing. We see the idle animations playing. If we attack, we can see him swing, and if we jump, he still jumps, and when he lands, he goes back to idle. Now we want to set up some logic so we can't constantly spam our attack. So let's go back into our script, and we're going to do that by implementing a private i enumerator function. We're going to name it melee attack anim delay. And we're going to yield return a new wait for seconds. And we're going to pass it our melee attack delay. And what we want to do before the yield return is this set trigger attack. And after the yield return, we're going to set is melee attacking to false. Also, we need to set is melee attacking to true beforehand. Now where we took out set trigger attack, we're going to start a new coroutine and say melee attack anim delay. This is saying that we are going to start our melee attack here, and then we're going to wait for the duration of our melee attack delay in seconds, and then we're going to set is melee attacking back to false, so we're then able to attack once again. Now that we have is melee attacking being set here, let's go ahead and use it in handle run. We're going to add another check to our if statements, and that's and not is melee attacking. And we're going to add it to the next statement as well. This prevents our character from flipping its Y rotation while it's currently in an attack animation. Now this next change is optional. But if you would like to freeze your character's movement whenever they're trying to throw a melee attack, 
Let's go ahead and implement a private bool. Like is melee attacking, but it will be for is frozen. Now let's modify handle run. We'll go down here and say if not is frozen, or if we're not grounded, so not check grounded, and we are frozen, then we want to do our normal run logic. However, else if we are grounded, so check grounded is true, we want to do the same thing except pass zero as our x component for our velocity. Now we can go ahead and set is frozen, but before we do that, let's go ahead and get rid of this last check here. That's actually redundant. We don't need to check if it's true if this is already checking if it's false. Down here, we said melee attack anim delay, and that is yield returning the delay here. And we could set is frozen here, however, we want our character to be able to move slightly before they're done attacking. So let's say private IE numerator, action freeze delay. And we're going to yield return a freeze delay float. And let's go ahead and make that now. We'll say public float freeze delay. And we'll set that to 0 0.4 by default. And in here, let's set is frozen to true. And is frozen is false after the delay. Now up where we attack, right after the coroutine where we start the attack anim delay, we're going to start another one and say action freeze delay. Now that that is set up, let's go into our handle animations function and set up our running animations. We'll say if mathf.abs move intention x is greater than 0.1f and check grounded is true we're going to say animator dot set integer and we want to set anim state and we're going to set it to 2 because that is our running animation then we're going to say else animator dot set integer anim state and we're going to set that to zero because that's our idle animation. Now we can go back into the editor and click play to test all the animations. We can see that running is working. We can also jump and our idle animation is working as well. Now let's test the movement freeze logic. If we attack and try to move, we see that we are frozen for a brief delay. And if we're airborne in attack, we should follow our trajectory and we'll still have some degree of aerial control. Okay, that looks like it's working well. Now for our shooting animation, the free assets don't actually provide us with one, so we'll have to make a makeshift one. Let's go down into the Light Bandit Sprite Sheet. Find Sprite Sheet 13, this is the one I'll be using. We can right click on it and click Create and Animation. And we'll name it Light Guard underscore Shoot. And we can drag that asset up. Minimize this first. We'll drag that asset into our light guard animation folder. Now if we open it, we should see the sprite here. And that will let us know that the animation is actually ready to use. Now before we go into the animation controller, select the shoot animation you created and make sure loop time is unchecked. Then we can double click on this and drag our shoot animation in here. If we zoom in, 
We want to place it below attack, but above recover, jump, and hurt. So let's select these and move them down. And move shoot in between them here. And now we're going to make some transitions. So right click on any state, make transition, and connect it to shoot. And same here, connect it to idle. Now we'll need a trigger to let the animation controller know when we should play this animation. So on the left side under parameters, let's create a new trigger and name it shoot. In the transition leading to the shoot animation, under conditions, we're going to add a new one and set shoot. Now if we go back into our script here, under player, we can go above jump and below where we do our melee attack. We'll say if attempt ranged attack animator dot set trigger and we called it shoot. Okay. So that's linked up. Let's go ahead and click play and see if that's working. All right. So we're shooting and the animation's playing. It's a little off time, but we can fix that in the timing window. So let's click on the transition leading to shoot. And here we can drag the duration in forward, let's say 115 or so percent. And then let's drag the animation forward and it'll snap to the beginning of that. So if we click play and we right click, we should see our animation play sooner and it's closer to when the projectile is leaving. And before we finish off here, we actually need to go back into our script, to our character script, and we actually forgot to put the headers on our variables here. So let's say header, we'll call this first one attributes. And this next one will be called movement. We can go to our character object now and scroll down to the player script, and now we'll see that attributes and movement are now showing as headers. That is going to conclude part four of our character systems. We now have some nice animations to go along with our movement and action code. In the coming videos, we are going to shift gears and start developing our terrain with tile maps. We still have some fine tuning to do with our character, but we are done with the basic systems. Please let me know if you have any comments or suggestions down below. Thank you so much for watching, this is Sev the Dev, and I will see you all in the next one.